Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at partial fractions with unknown powers. So this is something I encountered when I was mucking around with a couple of integrals, uh, and I think it's pretty interesting. So, what do I mean by partial fractions with unknown powers? Well, I guess the best way to demonstrate this is with an example. So probably the simplest case of this is with the fraction 1 over x to the n plus 1 plus x to the n. And we want to do partial fractions on this fraction right here. And as you can see, we have an unknown power n here. And ideally, we want n to be some natural number. So we don't want to deal with the fractional powers or anything weird like that. So we want to do partial fractions on this thing here. Well, first of all, notice that we can factor the denominator a little bit into 1 over x to the n, pulling x to the n out as a common factor. Um, and then times x plus 1 like so. And we want to decompose this thing here into two separate fractions because we have two factors right here. So let's write down the first fraction first. We want some fraction and we're going to deal with this x plus 1 factor first. So we have something over x plus 1. Well notice this polynomial down here has a degree of 1. That means the polynomial on the top has to have a degree of 0 which is just a constant. So let's call it a. And we want to add this with another fraction, with uh, our other factor, x to the n, as a denominator. But the problem with this is that we don't know how many terms we need on the top here, because if we have a polynomial of degree n down here, that means the polynomial on the top has to have a degree of n minus 1. So we don't really know how many terms there are. So how about let's just start writing down a couple. And remember, a polynomial follows in the form of some constant times x raised to the power of something. And since we have an unknown number of uh, terms, let's just use some subscript notation for our constants here. So our first um, power of x will be x to the n minus 1, because it's 1 degree less than our denominator here. So ideally, we want the subscript of our constant to match up with the power, just so we know where everything goes uh, with its respective power at the end. So let's call the first constant c n minus 1, and then we're going to add our next term. So our next term will be some constant times x to the n minus 2, just one power lower, and the subscript or constant will be n minus 2. And we're going to keep adding these terms all the way until we get down x to the first power, where we'll have some constant of c sub 1. And then we'll just add our last term, which is x to the zeroth power, with some constant c naught. So all of this junk here is being divided through by um, x to the n here. So this is our polynomial on top with a degree of n minus 1. So we have all this junk here, um, which is going to be a pain to write out every single time. So why not condense it down into a sum? So first of all, we have the same thing here. So a over x plus 1. And then now we have to add, and I'm going to pull out this 1 over x to the n first, just so things are a bit nicer. And now we have a sum, and let's use an index. I don't know, let's use k. So k is going to start somewhere and end somewhere. We'll sort that out later. But the general form for our polynomial is just going to be ck x to the k. And notice since we matched up the, the subscript here and the power, we can uh, clearly see where our k will start and where it ends. So it will start at 0 here, um, because 0 is the smallest number. And it's going to end at n minus 1. So this whole thing here is the polynomial on the numerator here, expressed in sigma notation. And remember, all of this stuff here is still 1 over x to the n, x plus 1, like so on the left hand side. So now what we want to do is figure out what our constants are, namely our a and all of our c, k constants. So to do this, why not isolate this polynomial on the top here, even though it's just a 1. Um, it's still a polynomial, so why not isolate it by multiplying both sides of the equation by this big denominator here. So if we do that, um, we're going to isolate our 1 here. And if we multiply this thing over to this first term here, well, this factor of x to the 1 will cancel out with this x to the 1, leaving with a times x to the n. And if we do the same thing, multiplying this over to here, well, our x to the n will cancel out with this x to the n, leaving us with x plus 1 multiplied by this sum here running from k equals 0 to n minus 1 um, of ck x to the k. 
And now what we can do is uh, distribute this sum into this x and this one. So what we get is 1 being equal to a times x to the n plus x sum running from k equals 0 to n minus 1 ckx of the k and then multiplying the sum into this one here we're just going to get the same thing and you see here for this first sum here we have this lonely little x floating around so why not invite it into the sum so if we bring it into the sum we're just adding one to this exponent right here and just one more step before we start calculating what our constants are we're going to rewrite the left hand side a bit notice this one is nothing but one times x to the zeroth power and why am I doing this? Well, we want to kind of visualize the polynomial on the left-hand side here. So if we treat the left-hand side like a polynomial, well, clearly all the powers of x are non-existent. Well, that's because they're being multiplied by zero. So we can add to here zero x to the first power plus zero x squared plus dot dot dot. So this just makes it clear that the coefficient of our x to the zero is one and all of the other coefficients of our powers are all zero. Alright, so now we can start mucking around with our constants. So first of all, let's just call these two sums S1 and S2 respectively, uh, just so we don't have to write it out again later. So our goal is to find all of our constants, so all of our CK values here and also this extra A here. The problem is here we want to equate all of our coefficients, but these coefficients here match up with the different powers of x um, across these two different sums, and we want to find some kind of way to compare all of them. So why not draw up a little table where we can sub in values of k and see if any patterns emerge. So I'll just keep these s1s and s2s here, and I'm going to draw up a little table here, and we're going to add a column for our k, and let's just start listing down some values for k. Well, k is going to start at 0, and the next value of k will be 1, and then 2, and then it's just going to keep going. And just before it ends at n minus 1, it's going to reach n minus 3, n minus 2, and then finally n minus 1. So we only need a couple of k values to work with uh, just to establish some kind of pattern. But let's plug all of these k values into each of these sums here. So for S1 here, if we plug K into this subscript and this exponent, um, we're going to get C0, X to the 0 plus 1, which is just 1. And then the pattern just continues, so we have C1, X squared. So the power here is always one more than the value of the subscript. Then we have C2, X cubed, dot, dot, dot. Then here we have CN minus 3, X to the N minus 2, cn minus 2 x to the n minus 1 and then finally cn minus 1 x to the n and we can do the exact same thing for our s2 uh, but this time it's just a bit more straightforward so we have c0 x0 so now here we have a table of all of our constants we want to deal with and don't forget this constant of a here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it down here and we'll deal with it later on so a times x to the n all right so let's start by equating some of our coefficients here let's start with x to the zeroth power here notice that the coefficient of x to the zero is one so that means on our table here whatever terms have x to the zeroth in it well their coefficients must add up to one so on our table, there's only one occurrence of x to the zeroth here. So therefore, I've, I'll put all the working over on the left-hand side here. C0, x0, which is this term right here. This must equal to 1 times x to the zeroth. And just to save time, I'm not going to put down um, the x's from here on up, um, just to save time, because they're just going to cancel out. And what we get now is that C0 is 1. So we already figured out one constant term. So let's move on to the next one. Let's have a look at x to the first power here. Well, where does that appear on our table? Well, it appears here and it appears here. That means the sum of these two constants, c0 and c1, must add together to give us this coefficient here, which is just zero. So we have here c0 added with this c1 constant here, and we want that to be zero. Well, we already know what C0 is, that's just 1, so we have 1 plus C1 being equal to 0. And subtracting 1 on both sides, that means that C1 is negative 1. 
and let's just solve one more constant and we should start seeing the pattern here. So let's have a look at x squared here. Well, x squared appears here and here on our table. That means the constants in front of those x squared terms must add up to give us a zero, like on the left hand side here. So what do we get? We get that c1 plus c2 must equal zero. So c1 plus c2 equals zero. But we already know what c1 is. c1 is nothing but negative one. So adding that with c2 gives us zero. So therefore, if we add one on both sides, we get that c2 equals to one. So let's check out all of our results so far. We have c0 being equal to one, c1 being equal to negative one, and then c2 being equal to one again. So if you see the pattern here, the coefficients are alternating between one and negative one. And the reason for that is because of this diagonal relationship here where the constants um, form a diagonal in front of their respective powers. So here we have x to the first and x to the first power here and forms a diagonal. And we also have another diagonal here. And then this x cubed will form another diagonal with something. And because of this relationship, we get equations which involve two consecutive c values. So if we find out what one of the constants are, we can easily find out what the next constant is. But that next constant uh, just takes the opposite sign. So that's why it alternates between one negative one and one. So we can generalize this rule a bit to say that some constant ck is equal to negative one to the power of k. And we can check that this holds for all of our constants by just plugging in the values of um, k we have so far. So here, c0, we're going to let k equal to zero. So if we let k equal to zero up here, we're going to get negative one to the zeroth power, which is just one. And that's the answer that we expected. And plugging one in for k here, we're going to get negative one to the first power, which will give us negative one as expected. And plugging two into here, negative one squared is one, which gives us one. So this formula holds right here for all of our constants. So we can use this formula here to work out all the constants all the way here. And the final constant we need to work out is what this a is here. Well, if you take a look on the left hand side here, if we continue uh, writing out that polynomial, we're going to eventually end uh, with zero times x to the nth power. So let's look for all the terms with um, x to the nth power here. So there's a term right here and there's a term right here, which is a term with our constant of a. So we can come up with, the, with an equation for this where the sum of these two constants must add to give the coefficient of this x to the n here. So what we get is our a plus this constant right here plus c n minus one. That must add together to give us a zero. And now we have to work out what c n minus one is. But remember we can use this formula that we worked out before um, and substitute it in. So our c n minus one becomes negative one and our k value here in this case is n minus one so we're just slapping that on the exponent here and that has to be equal to zero well to find a we can just subtract this term on both sides so we get that a is equal to negative negative one to the n minus one power as you have this extra factor of a negative up here you can um, combine it with the exponent to get rid of this negative one and this is your final result for our final constant all right, so let's go back up to the top here and substitute in all the constants that we just figured out. So remember, this was the fraction we originally wanted to do partial fractions on. And we managed to get to this line over here where we knew how to express the fraction, but we just didn't know what our constants were. And now since we know what our constants are, we can just simply substitute all of them into this line right here. So I'm going to rub out all of this junk right here, just so we have some space to write our answers down. So our fraction right here that we wanted to do partial fractions on will first of all be our constant a over x plus 1. But remember our a we found out to be negative 1 to the nth power. So what we get here is a negative 1 to the nth power over x plus 1. And now we're adding this with 1 over x to the nth. And we have a sum running from k equals 0 to n minus 1. And we needed to figure out what our c sub k was. Well, we found a formula for c sub k right here, which was negative 1 to the kth power. So all we need to do is just substitute that in right here. So we have a negative 1 to the kth power. And we just have this final x of the k right here. So this whole thing right here is our final answer. Um, 
for our original fraction after we've done partial fractions. And if you want to see what this thing here looks like without this sigma notation here, but what it looks like is just negative 1 to the nth power over x plus 1. And then you have some polynomial over x to the n, and that polynomial will just be, well, our first term uh, is just subbing k equals 0 into this exponent and this power here. So we're going to get a single 1, and then we're subtracting x, then plus x squared minus x cubed and then plus so on until we get to our final term of the polynomial. So let's how about do a quick example by using this formula we just found here. Let's try and do partial fractions on let's say 1 over x squared plus x. And just to be clear here, the power on top of this x is just a 1. So this fraction right here follows in the exact same form as our original fraction, where the first x here has a power of 1 more than the power of our second x here. So that means for this fraction here, our n value is just 1. So using this expression that we just found out, we're going to get a negative 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x to the n, but our n in this case is just 1, so we're just going to leave it as it is. And then we have a sum running from k equals to 0, and our n in this case is to 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, so k goes from 0 to 0 of negative 1 to the k, x to the k. And we have a sum running from 0 to 0, that means we only have one term in our sum. So that just means plugging in 0 into our um, k's here, so replace k with a 0 here and a 0 here. But notice that all of this junk here is just a 1, so we can just get rid of that. So if we decompose this fraction into partial fractions, we're just going to be left with this result right here. And we can check that this equals to what we started with just by doing some simple cross multiplication. So we have negative x over x plus 1 times x. And then multiplying this x plus 1 over here, we have plus x plus 1. This and that will cancel. And then indeed, we're going to be left with 1 over x squared plus x as we started with. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see everyone next time.